If you're writing Python code for ArcGIS Pro, perhaps using the Python window or the default editor, you'll benefit significantly from using a proper development environment. A good IDE will give you powerful features like code completion, AI assistance, and debugging tools, and this can greatly increase productivity. In this video, we'll explore these advantages and how to use them, as well as how to set up one of the best options available, Visual Studio Code. While there are several excellent Python editors available for free, such as PyCharm Community Edition, it's a bit more involved to set up for GIS, but it is a popular option. But we'll focus on Visual Studio Code. It's free, easy to use, and has lots of good features. So the first thing is to download Visual Studio Code, and we can go to the website. Uh, this is a Microsoft product, and we can download pretty straightforward. Once we've downloaded, we can run the installation. So if we just run through the whole process. So when that's installed, we can open Visual Studio Code. And one of the first things we can do, which is quite a good idea, is to sign in to GitHub Copilot. And this is the AI assistance, and it'll help us generate code and other things. And we can do that from this uh, left-hand accounts page uh, we can sign into GitHub and then that'll take us to the website. And if you don't already have an account, you can just create it from this link here. Uh, it's free. And once you've created an account and signed in, it will authorize the software. When Copilot is authorized, it'll be available on the right hand side here. And we'll look at that shortly. So the next thing is to go to the extensions here, this icon here on the left and we are gonna install Python. So type in Python in the search window. That should list Python and we can just go on the install button here. So once that's installed, uh, we should be good. So let's create a new Python file. Go to file, new file, and then a Python file. So now we need to point it to the ArcGIS Pro Python engine. And we can do that if you just hold down the control shift P keys and that'll open up the uh, Python interpreter selection drop down and might say Python is not installed, but we want to go to this enter interpreter path here. And then we go find and that'll open up the dialog. And then we just need to go to find it. So go to program files, then ArcGIS, then pro bin, and then Python, and then ENVS, and just follow it through, ArcGIS Pro, and then at the bottom here, there's this Python XE. So just select that, and then select interpreter. And we can now see it's listed at the bottom right here as our interpreter. So having pointed it to the ArcGIS Pro Python interpreter, we want to test that it's all working, that we can access the ArcPy uh, ArcGIS Pro library. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste some code I've already got here. Uh, and this code will call on ArcPy. So having pasted the code in the window, we can go to run and then run without debugging. Uh, it's just asking us to save this file. So we'll do that. Just pick the Python debugger and that will run in the terminal window at the bottom. And that has finished. So let's just make the window a little bit bigger so we can see what we've got. And at the top here, this available toolboxes. So that's that first print statement, but it's really the next line of code we want to see that it's executed. And this is the ArcPy list toolboxes. So it lists all the toolboxes ArcPy has available and it has done so. And that is showing us that ArcPy is available and we're all set up for coding Python with ArcGIS Pro. So let's go to Pro and let's create a Python toolbox in the catalog window. Now, if we were to do that, and then we were to try and edit that Python toolbox through the edit command, it will ask us what application we want to do that with. And it'll ask us that every single time. 
So we want to make Visual Studio Code the default Python editor. So what we'll do is we'll go to Windows Explorer and go back to that Python code we saved earlier, the .py file, and then just right click on that, go to show more options. This is Windows 11. Go to properties and then we can see open with and we're just going to change and we're going to select Visual Studio Code and set as default. So that means now all Python code will be the default editor will be Visual Studio Code and anything we open including Python toolboxes will go to that. So if we open the Python toolbox now we automatically go to Visual Studio Code to open that and we can see the default code that ArcGIS Pro generates when you create a Python toolbox and you can edit it from here. I've got a whole video on how to create Python toolboxes if you want to look at that. But basically you can uh, code this up in here and then we can go to file and save and then go back to pro and then just refresh the toolboxes and any edits you've made will then be seen in the toolbox. So that's how we can edit Python toolboxes with Visual Studio Code. So let's go back to VS Code and just close that. Um, let's close this other window just to make things a bit clearer. So let's talk a bit more about coding in Visual Studio Code itself. And one of the advantages, it has IntelliSense and that allows us to just hover on any Python functions, uh, any ArcPy functions, and that'll show us what parameters are needed, what's returned and so on. So we'll get some documentation about the functions we're using. And if we start typing in ArcPy and then dot, and then just the first few letters of a tool we're looking for, it's gonna list all the tools that are available uh, with that beginning spelling. So it's going to help us find the tools we need, the libraries we need. And again, we can just hover over it and see what the documentation is for that. So that IntelliSense helps for code completion. And of course, once we've written code, we can just copy it and go back to Pro. And we could just paste it into the Python window here in Pro. And then we just hit return a couple of times. And that will run the Python code and we're getting the same results as what we saw in Visual Studio Code with this little bit of uh, Python we wrote. So you can do a pop, copy and paste, but you don't have to do that. You can do it all in Visual Studio Code if you want. Um, and let's have a look at how we might do that. So let's have a look at this layer if we want to do something a bit more complicated. This is a cities layer. We've got all these cities. We've got this field pop for population, and we've got all the values here for the populations of all the cities. So let's see if we want to populate this uh, other field, pop class, with some kind of description. Uh, it's a text field, so let's kind of group these into uh, more descriptive ranges based on the population size. So how would we do that? So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Now, of course, we could just so start typing in the code in the code window, but instead we're going to use the AI. And we just write in a description of what we want in this window down here on the right. Now, I've already prepared something, uh, save time, so just paste that in. So let's have a look at this description. We just really just need to describe what we want. What this is saying is we want to take this layer. Again, we need to give it the full path. Of course, we don't need to do that in the Python window in Pro because we're operating in VS Code. There's no direct link between the Python window and VS Code. So we need to put the full path of the data set we're going to work with. And we're saying take the pop field for each feature, read the population value pop and update population class field based on the following logic. So if pop is less than 1 million, enter the text under 1 million into pop class. If it's between 1 and 2 million, enter the text between 1 and 2 million, and so on. So we're using the number to create a description. So we just write it out in plain English what we want, and then just hit the apply on the bottom right here. And then Copilot will generate the Python code. Now again, we could just copy that and go back to Pro and paste it into the Python window. Uh, the alternative is to use this insert and let's just get rid of this other 
code. We don't need this anymore. And put the cursor there and then insert a cursor and that will move the code into the coding window. And now it's here, we can actually just run the code from here. We don't have to go back to Pro. So let's just clear the terminal and let's go to run and run without debugging. And we should see that code running in the terminal window below. And when we see the print statement pop class field updated successfully at the bottom, we know the code has completed because that's the last thing in the code. So that has finished. So let's go back to Pro. And now if we refresh the cities table, we can now see that pop class has been populated with that text description that we were looking to fill in. And so the code has run successfully and we have got what we want. So the AI can really save a lot of time uh, and make coding a lot easier. Another good use of an ID is to help with debugging. So to find and fix errors in our code. And to do that, we can go to run and debugging on the left here. Now, the first thing we have to do is we do have to open a folder. So this is just where our Python code is, our .py files reside. And yes, trust that folder. And then if we go back to uh, the debugging, we'll see there's this create a launch JSON file. And we do need to do that to run debugging. So select Python debugger and then Python file. And now we get this configuration file. So we just need to add a line here just under this program. So if we add this line Python and then give it a and give it a URL. And this is just going to that Python XC, the ArcGIS Pro Python XC. It's the same one as we set earlier for the Python interpreter. We we'll also give this file a name, ArcGIS Pro Script Debug. And then we save that from the file. And this will just be saved in the same folder as the Python scripts. And we can move this JSON file to a new folder if we're going to be starting another Python project. But we do need to have it set up to do any debugging. So let's go back to the code. And what we can do is we can go into the column on the left and just click in there. And that will create a breakpoint. And it's symbolized just with this red dot. So that means when the code is run, every time it gets to any of these breakpoints, and you can put any number in your code, it will stop at that point and we can examine all the variables and see how the code is set up. Let's go to run and start debugging. So the code will run until it gets to that red dot, that breakpoint. And when it does, we can see exactly what the variables are at that point. And we can see we've got a couple of variables. We've got uh, 540814 and under 1 million. So that's the pop and the pop class. So if we just go back to pro and have a look at that table, because we're running the same bit of code again, and we can see the first row here. And indeed, the pop is 540814 and pop class is under 1 million. So it's showing us it's got to the first row in that table and it's showing us what the values are of those two fields that we're looking at. And then we can select step over and it'll move to the next line of code and show us what the variables are there. And if we have a look at the second row in the table, we can see the pop for this one. It's 2481272 and between two and three million. So if we go back to the code and then we just hit the continue button, it'll go around again until it gets to the next row. And indeed, we can see those values there, 2481272, which is what we'd expect. Breakpoints allow us to step through and examine the state of our code and identify errors and bugs. And a combination of breakpoints and print statements is a good way of debugging larger Python scripts. Debugging is one of the advantages of using a development environment like Visual Studio Code, but there are several others, as we've seen, and anyone doing regular Python scripting 
really should be using one. And to see a more in-depth look at creating Python toolboxes with Visual Studio Code, take a look at this video.